Hey puzzle friends, how's it going? Welcome back or if you're new, I'm Juby and welcome to my channel. This is a place for anyone who loves puzzles, whether you're new to puzzling or you consider yourself an expert. In today's video, I thought it'd be fun to go through the Clementoni Color Broom collection. So I think it's no surprise as to why I've bought a whole bunch of puzzles from this collection. It's basically a gradient and rainbow lover's dream. Um, it's got a whole bunch of like gorgeous, colorful rainbow puzzles. Some are gradients, some are collages. Um, there's like a challenge puzzle. And then there's some more like kind of abstract pattern type puzzles. Um, this seems to be a fairly new collection. It came out last year, possibly in Europe and maybe North America, but here in Australia, it's actually quite new. Um, I only started seeing these online here, maybe end of last year and beginning of this year. And this collection has seven puzzles, although I've only got five. So in a sec, we will have a closer look at these five, plus have a quick chat about the two that I don't have and why I don't have them. And then we'll also look at the sort of packaging real quick, um, also look at the pieces, and then we're gonna get into some puzzling. So for this video, I decided to actually do two puzzles. I'm doing a 500 piece and a 1000 piece, just to sort of give you a better idea of what the puzzling experience is like for this collection. And also because I just thought it'd be fun. So in a sec, let's have a closer look at these puzzles. So I figured we'd start talking about the puzzles from this collection that I don't actually have. So the first one is a 1000 piece gradient and it's just called Pure. And it's, yeah, basically a very standard, very pretty gradient. Um, I basically didn't get that one because I just felt that I have like behind me and even in my spare room a whole bunch of very similar gradients already so i don't think like having another one would have really added much to my collection that i don't already have um, but i think you know if you were someone who was looking to get a nice gradient puzzle it's probably great so yeah definitely nothing against it i just felt that i already had enough sort of standard gradients in my collection and so the next one that i don't have but i kind of do is actually this one here. So you might notice this is different packaging and that's because this is actually an older um, design that Clementoni put out. I couldn't find an exact date on the packaging and I unfortunately can't remember when I got it, but I think it's at least a couple of years old. Um, so this one here is called Gradient, but it's actually called Mosaic in this collection. So yeah, from what I could tell, the image is exactly the same. Um, yeah, I guess it, it just seems to be branded to fit the new collection. But I thought it was interesting that they changed the name and that they decided to include it in this sort of new collection, like re-release it. Um, the, there is another difference, which is the pieces, but we'll talk about that in a little while. Um, but yeah, apart from that, it's pretty much the same design as far as I could tell. Um, and I thought it was interesting because when I first got this one, um, it was the only gradient available from Clementoni that I could tell I couldn't see. I never saw any others online or in the shops or anything like that. Um, maybe one had been released years ago, I don't know, but I guess in recent years, this seems to be have been like Clementoni's standard gradient, which I always thought was interesting because it is this sort of different patterned one. It's not a standard gradient. Um, yeah, so I thought that was interesting that they have chosen to put this one out, but as part of this collection. And then we have here a couple of 500 piece ones. So this first one's just a really, uh, this one's called Waves and it's just a really gorgeous, well, as the name describes, like these sort of 3D kind of looking waves of different kind of like rainbow colored ribbons or strips of paper or something like that. Um, yeah, I just thought it was really cool. Like it's sort of, a, I guess, a gradient and sort of like an abstract kind of image. Um, yeah, so. I think, yeah, I just really liked it. I thought it was really beautiful. Um, and, you know, I don't mind having some smaller piece counts, you know, to do as well. Um, you know, kind of like 500 pieces and 1000 pieces. So yeah, I thought, why not? Can't go past this one. And then this next one is, I think it's called squares. Yeah, squares. It's sort of this interesting um, kind of stylized abstract uh, image of like, I guess, the sort of sides of buildings, like you're in amongst some apartment blocks or city buildings or something like that. So yeah, it's sort of semi-abstract, I guess. But yeah, it just looks kind of fun and colorful and um, 
yeah, I don't know. I don't think, I don't know how challenging it would be. I think like some of the plain colored buildings would be pretty easy, but then this sort of all these colorful squares would be a bit more challenging. So yeah, but I just thought that was a fun one as well. Um, but yeah, I thought it's interesting how like so far all the puzzles are actually quite different to each other. So yeah, definitely a variety available in this collection. And then this next one is called Whirl, and it's basically uh, a, yeah, a beautiful rainbow whirl of uh, like made up of these beautiful colored flowers. So you've got a whole bunch of yellow flowers and like reds and blues, purples, like all the colors of the rainbow essentially. But yeah, it just looks super pretty. Um, great if you're into flowers or rainbows or both. Um, yeah, so. I don't think I need to explain too much why I like each one. I mean, it's pretty much the same reason. It's pretty, it's colorful, it's rainbow. So yeah, just another gorgeous puzzle. And then there's this 1000 piece one and it's, I think it's called collage. Yeah, it's called collage and basically is what it says. Um, just all these like colorful squares. It's, I mean, I guess it's a gradient cause you know, you're sort of going from green through all the way to like blue like sort of colors of the rainbow and um, it's not like with well how it's quite segmented like the colors this one isn't so much the greens sort of do blur into the yellows and the, the yellows turn orangey to red like so this one is definitely more of a gradient um, but yeah there's like sort of a mix of um, well yeah sort of solid colored squares but Pattern squares, textured ones, sort of photos of things. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, yeah, a lot of detail in this one too. So definitely another fun one in the collection. And then this one here is one I have have done a while ago. And it's just, oh, this one's just called Gradient, but it's 2000 pieces. And it's not exactly rainbow. Like it's sort of more, well, I don't know. It has a lot of rainbow colors, but to me, it doesn't feel very rainbow. Um, I don't know why, because it, you know, you do have like your greens, yellows, reds, purples, blues, but maybe it's just sort of the way the gradients been done. It looks less rainbow. Um, but yeah, I did this one soon after I got it, which was last year, I think, or earlier this year. I'm not too sure, but it was quite tough quite challenging to do. So I would definitely consider this one a bit of a gradient challenge puzzle. Um, you know, not just because because of the size, but also because it's just got some really tricky sort of parts of the gradient to do. So yeah, but you know, if you love gradients and you don't mind a bit of a challenge, i will definitely give this one a go. Uh, yeah. So um, I think that's all I have to really say about the puzzles from this collection. Um, I definitely really love all the designs i think they're really cool and yeah i think if you love rainbows and colorful puzzles it's probably going to be a fun collection to to have i mean i i like that as well that you don't necessarily have to get all of the puzzles in the collection you can just pick and choose the ones you like so yeah i sort of feel like there's a colorful puzzle here for everyone so yeah so in a sec um i'm gonna open one up and we'll have a quick look at the packaging and then we can look at the pieces as well so let's have a quick look at the packaging of this puzzle here. This is just one of the 1000 pieces, but uh, it seemed that the packaging on the 2000 piece and the 500 piece was pretty similar, pretty much the same sort of information. So you've got the nice big image on the front of the box, the piece count, uh, color boom collection and the, the brand logo. And then from what I could tell, the sides are pretty much the same sort of information um, as each other. So color boom collection, the image or part of the image 1000 puzzle and Clementoni and that's sort of replicated on this side and also this side here and then this other side is slightly different same information but just also has the name which is collage the size which is 69 by 50 centimeters and then also the size in inches which is I'm not sure if I'm saying this right 27 and 1 fifth inch is that correct is that what you say <laughs> And then by 19 and two thirds inches. I'm sorry. I can put it on the screen if you like. Um, and it's made in Italy and has the barcode. Um, and then let's not forget about the back. So we've got quite a lot of info on the back, but it actually 
a lot of it is the same, it's just in multiple languages. Um, so it says Color Room Collection, and then also has some images of some of the other puzzles in the collection, not all of them, just a handful. Yeah, basically it's got the same, I guess the same thing written in all of these languages, but it's basically a blurb about just sort of talking about the Color Room Collection. And then sort of, yeah, the logo made in Italy, a bit of info about the company and sort of info about recycling the packaging and things like that. I guess a lot of sort of standard info that you find on kind of mainstream branded puzzles. So let's open this up. So yeah, pretty ordinary and plain on the inside. And then the puzzle pieces just come in one of these sort of, I guess sort of non-reusable plastic bags. I mean, I guess you could sort of choose to reuse these if you clip them shut or tape them shut, but generally they're not really designed to be reused. Um, you can see, well, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but I'm seeing a fair amount of puzzle dust in the bag, which from memory, that's pretty normal with Clementoni puzzles. They're a bit, bit like Ravensburger and you sort of have that dust. Um, but yeah, they come in this plastic bag. And then there's just a couple of sort of leaflets here. Like one is um, advertising some sort of pro a Clementoni product. Oh, okay, you can sort of get some sort of puzzle framing, something like that. Or you can, I think, get like customize yourself, your own image or yourself image as a puzzle, something like that. Um, so yeah, I guess they provide some other services other than just puzzles. And then, what's this one? Um, I've got to find the right language. Puzzle after sales service. Okay, so like talking about what to do if you've lost puzzle pieces or some quality or things like that. Um, yeah, interesting. And it's sort of got a little thing you can send away and put your barcode here and I guess they replace pieces or something or give you a new puzzle, I'm not too sure. So yeah, but it's good to that it provides you with that information so you know what to do if that happens. And then yeah, just an empty box, so pretty simple. Um, so in a sec I figure we will have a look at the pieces but we won't just do this one, we might compare the 500 piece, the 1000 piece and even the 2000 piece and because I noticed that the older sort of gradient mosaic puzzle that I have has different pieces it, we should have a quick look at that one too and sort of compare it so yeah let's have a look at the puzzle pieces so I thought it'd be interesting instead of just showing pieces from one of the puzzles let's compare um, so this first bunch here are from that older Clementoni gradient the one that is referred to as mosaic in the uh, color boom collection um, but yeah it's just called gradient in the original sort of Clementoni collection. Then this here are uh, pieces from the 2000 piece puzzle from the Color Boom collection. Uh, this is from the 1000 piece uh, whirl floral puzzle from the Color Boom collection. And these ones here are from the 500 piece uh, called Waves uh, from the Color Boom collection. And so the first thing I noticed, which is kind of interesting is all these three here have a fairly like kind of glossy, smooth, very smooth, uh, glossy surface. Um, yeah, like pretty glossy. Actually, this one's not quite as glossy, but well, this one's actually, the 2000 piece pieces are actually a bit different, but I'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, the main difference is that this older Clementoni, or I guess a different series of Clementoni, actually has a very different surface. It's sort of got that matte linen finish. Like there is a bit of gloss or sheen, but it's got those sort of little crosshair hatched kind of texture, like those lines running crisscross. So you can actually feel it when you touch it. Um, and that's how I was expecting the other pieces to be because that seems to be all my other Clementoni puzzles seem to be like these ones here. Um, so yeah, so then apart from that, across the board, the size of the pieces seem to be, and the shape seem to be very similar, except for these 2000 pieces. Like you might be able to notice, but they are actually a fraction smaller. So let's grab, so if you look at 
these two, you can see that the 2000 piece one is sort of like just a fraction sort of smaller than the older style Clementoni. And that seems to be, oh, where does this one go there? This seems to be the case for like a lot of them. Like even this one, it sits a bit smaller and also probably be able to tell quite well on this one. It's like definitely is a little bit smaller, like not heaps, um, but yeah, a little bit. So I just thought that was interesting that the 2000 pieces are a slightly smaller size. Um, I don't know why I'm guessing that either it was just so the overall size of the 2000 piece puzzle wasn't going to be as big, or maybe it's a manufacturing thing. Like maybe they actually have to use different machinery or a different factory or something, some other process that's different to the 1,500 piece puzzles. So yeah, just n nothing wrong with that at all. Just thought it was an interesting thing to note, I guess. And then, uh, yeah, and then as for the shape though, pretty much the, sh the shape of all of them is a fairly standard cut, but um, the pieces I've found to be unique enough that they don't have false fits. So like this one is like, there's a few little sort of skewed edges and like interesting things like that to make these pieces a bit more of a unique fit, which is nice. Like even this being a bit bigger. And so, yeah, it's nice that there's a bit of variety in the pieces, but it does seem like that variety is across the board with all four of these puzzles. So yeah, that's, that's something I definitely like about the uh, Clementoni pieces. And then what else? Um, so the other thing that they all have in common is they all seem to have this, like, I guess you call it gray board. Um, yeah, very much just a cardboard backing, no extra paper layer, which I like. And yeah, just a matte, matte gray board. So that seems to be the same on all of the puzzles. And then, yeah, the other thing I noticed um, as well as the size of these 2000 piece ones being a bit smaller, they actually feel thinner as well. So I don't know if we'll be able to notice it here, but they're just a fraction thinner than like all the others. Um, you might have to just take my word for it because I'm not sure it's going to really show up too well in camera, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I just th thought that was interesting, but I guess that makes sense if they're a bit different size and have been made differently or on a different machine or something that maybe, yeah, they're just made more, a bit thinner, not a lot, but yeah. But all the others I think seem to be about the same thickness, I think, like they feel pretty similar. Even this older style one feels pretty similar in thickness to the new like 500 and 1000 piece ones. So yeah, so I think that pretty much sums up the pieces. I guess the only other thing to say is they all feel very strong and sturdy and they don't feel like the tabs don't feel like they'd break easily or anything like that. Very, yeah, very thick and strong. Even the thinner 2000 piece ones seem pretty, pretty strong. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So for this video, I decided to do two puzzles. I thought it'd be more fun. Uh, since there's seven puzzles in the collection and there's like quite a variety, I figured doing these two would sort of give a reasonable kind of uh, idea of what the puzzles in the whole collection are like. So the first one I'm going to be doing is this 500 piece one called Waves. I just really love how vibrant and rich the sort of rainbow colors are and I just really love that sort of 3D wavy swirly design. It looks really cool. Um, so definitely looking forward to doing that one. And the other one I'll be doing is this 1000 piece one called Well. And love the flowers in it and the sort of, I guess, solid sections of this whirl or swirly design. I just think it looks really cool. Um, I basically picked these two because I guess they're my favorites in the collection. I just like them the most, but I mean, to be honest, all the puzzles in the collection look really awesome and just look really cool. So in a sec, we will jump over to doing this puzzle. And I figure we'll just sort of puzzle the whole thing and then come back and we'll have a chat about it and then we can get into puzzling this one.
so I'm back and I've finished this absolutely stunning 500 piece puzzle I just really love how it's turned out it's so beautiful and rich and vibrant like the colors just look amazing in it um, this one was like really fun to do but also a little bit challenging so all up it took just over two hours I'd say that's longer than a sort of average 500 piece um, but yeah it was yeah definitely a really fun challenge puzzle and a definitely a doable challenge puzzle I didn't feel frustrated by it at all I just really enjoyed it um, yeah had a great time with it and love the end result um, so I guess let's sort of talk about the pieces and pros and cons and that sort of thing so I really like I guess the cut of the pieces in that the piece shapes fit well together there's no like false fits um, that I recall at all so yeah I feel like the piece shapes are sort of unique enough that I don't find pieces going in the wrong spot um, it, and especially with a design like this it sort of would be kind of difficult to do that anyway I think um, but I guess one thing that I find with this puzzle and also pretty much all Clementonis is the pieces definitely have a very loose fit so as you can see like the pieces you can't do a puzzle pickup because you can't pick up small sections and not and especially not the whole thing like so yeah I found that with older Clementonis as well that the pieces just fit fairly loosely together um, this is probably a little bit of a slightly tighter fit than maybe some of my older Clementonis but yeah you definitely can't pick up sections very easily at all if you get lucky you might be able to pick up a little bit but it tends to just break apart so that is a bit frustrating thankfully with this puzzle it's so small that it wasn't a, too much of a hassle to kind of build uh, the puzzle together in any particular spot like I don't have to reach very far to reach the whole puzzle but it does become a problem on larger size puzzles I guess and then the other sort of issue is this sort of smooth surface of the pieces creates a bit of glare or sheen um, you know I, I've been finding that a lot with a lot of puzzles lately because you know any sort of flat smooth surface tends to just allow for sheen I guess but this one especially because they are a little bit sort of glossy um, so I'm getting a bit of a spot light here and um, yeah and I think even in the time lapse there was a bit of spot lighting over here as well um, and that's just like my overhead light so you know not much not too much I can do so yeah I think it might be more of an issue for some people than others really just depends on your lighting and stuff like that but it is a I find it a little bit problematic especially when you like a puzzle like this you're really trying to see color differences so you really want to be able to see the pieces clearly and so having to move around to try and see what the actual piece color is is a little bit annoying but um, I feel like it's just something that a lot of puzzle brands sort of have a problem with so it seems to be a fairly common thing and then I guess the other thing with the pieces is well more the puzzle itself is that uh, there was a fair amount of puzzle dust in the box although here like not much puzzle dust to sort of there's a few specks and like probably if I lift this up yeah if I lift that up there's a little bit but most there was a fair amount of puzzle dust but most of it seems to have stayed in the box um, I don't think I ended up making me too sneezy um, but you know and some people don't care at all about puzzle dust and then other people are really bothered by it I'm more that category I tend to be more bothered by it but yeah I think um, actually it wasn't that much of an issue I think having the uh, sort of glossier surface actually let the puzzle dust kind of slip off and just stay in the box so it ended up being not as big of an issue as I was thinking it would be um, but yeah so I think apart from that that's pretty much all I have to sort of say I just yeah definitely enjoyed this one would totally recommend this one um, I think if you're someone who loves puzzle pickups then this would probably annoy you because you <laughs> really can't pick this one up so I think that to me is probably the biggest issue is just not being able to pick up sections but um, I really apart from that like I really love like the reason why I keep still doing Clementonis even though the piece fit is kind of loose is because the pieces themselves are still actually really nice quality they're always really thick and sturdy and just there's no false fits so 
feel like that is uh, positive enough that, that I can sort of overlook the looseness of the pieces. Um, so that's, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about this one. Definitely love it. Um, so in a sec, let's uh, have a, you know, let's get into puzzling the 1000 piece uh, well puzzle. So I think I'm just over halfway done with this puzzle so far and I really love how it's looking. It's super pretty with all these colorful flowers and these sort of beautiful sections of color. Um, but that being said, it's definitely been a very challenging puzzle. I've spent a uh, good couple of sessions getting to this point. Um, so all up, I think I've spent six and a half hours so far. So it's definitely proving uh, challenging and time consuming 
and I've got a whole bunch of orangey yellow pieces left so I've got a whole bunch of trays here full of like oranges and yellows which all need to still be placed um, I'm sort of guessing that to place all of these is maybe going to take another three hours give or take I don't know I hope it doesn't take longer than that but we'll see um, but yeah, even though it's been challenging, it's still been really enjoyable. I haven't actually felt frustrated at all. Um, I did find myself getting a bit tired though after the sort of two or two and a half hour mark. I feel like that was when I should have stopped because then I just sort of was having trouble placing pieces. Um, so I think it's sort of the sort of puzzle that you should just do in sort of shorter bursts of puzzling because it can get a bit tiring um, trying to look at all these little flowers. But yeah, I, apart from that, yeah, I think it's really pretty. And yeah, even though it's challenging, it's still a fun challenge, um, but it is pretty difficult. So I would definitely rate this level of challenge higher than that of the 500 piece. Like if the 500 piece was 1000 pieces, I think it would still be easier than this one. Um, so talk, let's talk about the pieces, I guess. So pretty much has the same kind of issues or pros and cons as the 500 piece. Um, I like, the sort of piece shapes and the quality I think like the pieces are nice and thick and sturdy um, they have like unique enough shapes that they fit together well without any false fits but like the 500 piece one you know pieces like sections break pretty easily you cannot do a puzzle pickup with this unless you want to pick up pieces off the floor so I think that can be a little frustrating that you can't pick up sections but then I suppose if you have a puzzle board like this that you can move around you can probably just spin the puzzle and work on the section or color that you want so therefore you don't really need to necessarily move giant sections across the board but you know everyone puzzles differently so kind of depends on your puzzling style and yeah um, I'm not sure if you can see it but I can definitely see a fair amount of puzzle dust so I think yeah, there's been a lot more puzzle dust with this one, maybe just because there's more pieces, I guess. Um, but it hasn't really made me sneeze or anything too much. Um, it's been okay and it doesn't seem to really be sticking to the tops of the pieces at all, just more on the board. And yeah, and I guess like the 500 piece one, I've had a bit of sheen or glare in certain spots as well. So yeah, so pretty much all the same problems and good points as the 500 piece one. So I think that's pretty much all I have to say at this point about the puzzle. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to finishing this one. I think it's going to look really pretty. I'm not really looking forward to trying to place all these yellows and oranges. I think that is going to be pretty tricky. Um, but I guess in a sec I'll try and get back to finishing this and then we'll come back and have a final chat about both puzzles and the whole collection.
Well, I think it's safe to say that I grossly underestimated how long it would take to finish this puzzle. No, it didn't take about three hours. It took twice that. It actually took six hours. So in total, this whole puzzle's taken me about 12 and a half hours. So it's a pretty substantial amount of time. Um, but despite that, I really like how it's turned out. It definitely meets my expectations in terms of like the way it looks. I think it looks super beautiful, just looks really cool. I love how the sections look. Yeah, I think it's really pretty. Definitely like glad I did it. Yeah, no regrets. Um, I just, I guess that my only thing is I wish I had allowed myself a bit more time so I didn't feel so pressured to get this done. Um, yeah, so I think my advice would be if you're doing this one to, uh, you know, just allow yourself lots of time to do it. Don't rush it and do try and do uh, parts of the puzzle in like shorter amounts of time, like lots of, you know, maybe one or two hour sessions because it does get quite tiring after a while. Um, yeah, so yeah, apart from that, um, I don't have too much more to add, like pretty much like I said earlier, um, I still feel the same way about the sort of pros and cons of Clementoni piece quality and puzzle quality. Um, yeah, so I definitely didn't have any false fits, even in all this yellow and orange, which was really good. So especially for like challenge puzzles like this, um, I think it's really important to not have false fits. So yeah, I really like their piece shape because I just think um, they're like unique. The cut is like unique enough that you just don't seem to get false fits. And yeah, and they, the pieces fit nicely together. But yeah, that being said, definitely still an issue where pieces don't really, they come apart pretty easily. So um, it was fine with this puzzle cause I just turned it around, but I can imagine that being a bit frustrating if you're just doing, well, if you don't want to turn the puzzle around or you can't, depending on your puzzle setup, I think that could definitely be a bit frustrating if you can't lift up sections to sort of move around the board. So. Yeah, that, I think that just really depends on your puzzling style and what bothers you about puzzling. And uh, yeah, the glare was definitely still a bit of an issue. Um, I think that's always going to be a problem with any sort of puzzle that has like a sheen or a glossy surface. It's just, and I think that also really depends on your lighting and that sort of thing. And um, yeah, puzzle dust, uh, I can definitely see some on the board. It's not horrendous, I'd say. I don't know if I could lift this up. Uh, yeah, of course, there's a bit more underneath the puzzle pieces. Um, but uh, for the most part, just like the 500 piece, most of the puzzle dust sort of stayed in the box, which was good. And it didn't end up being too much of an issue. So yeah, actually, um, yeah, it didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. So yeah, um, so I think that's pretty much all I have to say about doing this puzzle. Definitely enjoyed it, but it's definitely difficult and definitely a challenge. So I think um, this one's for those of you out there that really love a challenging, like, yeah, who really find uh, like a lot of fun and enjoyment in doing a challenge puzzle. I think this one's for you, but if you just want a very relaxing puzzle, maybe this isn't the one for you. So yeah, so in a sec, uh, I'll wrap things up and we'll sort of talk about final thoughts about the collection as a whole. So after doing a few puzzles from this collection, not just the two in this video, but also previously the 2000 piece and I guess the sort of mosaic gradient puzzle as well. Um, yeah, I think it's safe to say this is a really like, nice and fun and interesting collection. And I feel like Clementoni sort of really uh, made puzzles in this collection for all sorts of puzzlers out there. Like they've got these more sort of challenging ones and then ones that are a bit more mid range and then also ones that are just pretty simple and just fun to do. Um, yeah, so I think there's sort of something here, both design wise and difficulty level wise uh, for all sorts of puzzlers out there. Um, in terms of like quality, I think overall the quality is really nice. The pieces are very sort of thick and chunky and very strong. And I really like the uniqueness of the piece cut. It means that you're not having like any annoying false fits and that can be especially problematic with gradients. So yeah, very pleased to say that I didn't have any false fits. So very happy with that. Um, yeah, I think the sort of main two issues with Clementoni um, and particularly this uh, collection is the looseness of like how the pieces go together. I kind of do wish they had a slightly tighter fit. 
Um, so I think some people might find that very problematic, um, but uh, I normally do, but I feel like in this case, I, you know, could accommodate that issue by just sort of turning my puzzle board around or when I was doing the 500 piece one, I didn't need to reach very far anyway. And yeah, the other problem was how glossy the pieces were. So that again, I think that's going to be different depending on your lighting setup and yeah, like how you puzzle and that sort of thing. So for me, it was a bit of an issue. Um, and I wish they weren't so glossy, but I can kind of see now why they might be that glossy. Um, I think it might have been uh, made that way so it enhanced the sort of vibrancy and richness of the colors in the designs. So if it's because of that reason, I can kind of understand it. Um, so overall though, for me personally, I still think Clementoni is a really nice brand and have really nice designs and I really like this collection. So I definitely don't regret getting all these puzzles. I've been enjoying doing them all, even the really tough one. And I'm looking forward to doing the other couple that I haven't yet done. So yeah, I, I think it's a really nice, yeah, really nice collection. So let's briefly talk price. I'm not gonna talk about individual prices here because I got these at all different places at different price points. Um, but here in Australia, Clementoni seems to be a fairly nice brand, but um, is actually like quite reasonably and sometimes very inexpensively priced. So some of these I got at a very low price. And so, yeah, I, I think that's pretty awesome. Like I feel like the quality is pretty nice and you get really cool designs and it seems like a pretty low reasonable price. Um, definitely lower than something like uh, definitely lower than like cloudberries and uh, also like a lot less expensive than Ravensburger. So yeah, quite a low price point. So I think, yeah, in total, um, like overall, I would say this collection and probably Clementoni as a brand in general is definitely uh, worth it. And yeah, I definitely recommend this collection. I think it's a really awesome collection, really fun. And I think there's sort of something for everyone here. So I guess in the comments below, let me know what you think of this collection. Uh, what did you think of the two puzzles that I did? Have you got any of the puzzles from this collection and, or are there any that are on your wish list? So yeah, I guess let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all things puzzles. And for even more puzzle content, you can check me out over on Instagram at jigsaw underscore juby. Thanks so much and see you next time. Bye.